Okay, so before we move on into our next topic, let's do a little backtracking here. So biology is, um, you know, the class that you're in, but biology literally means the study of life. So bio means life, ology means study of. So let's go back and uh, just look at uh, four basic theories in biology. So uh, a theory, as I've said before, is an explanation for observations and evidences of natural phenomena. All right, so if we look at the uh, four basic theories of biology, the first is the cell theory. So um, uh, a cell is, so the cell theory states that all organisms are made of cells. All right, so the next theory in here is the gene theory. And the gene theory states that organisms contain coded information that determines their form, function, and behavior. So our genes are going to tell us, you know, what we look like, uh, uh, how our body works, and how we're going to behave for the most part. Now, uh, environment is going to influence all of those as well. All right. Next is the hereditary theory. And then what the hereditary theory says is that the genes of an organism are inherited as discrete units. And so what this means then is that uh, the uh, gene that you got from your mom or the gene that you got from your dad, uh, you inherit that totally. So, you know, if we go back a little bit, we have 46 chromosomes, 23 of those chromosomes we get from our mom, 23 of those chromosomes we get from our dad. But when we look at this, you know, when we give off uh, a chromosome, uh, we are either going to give off our mom's chromosome or our dad's chromosome that we got. All right, and so with that is going to go either our mom's gene or our dad's gene for that trait that we got. So we give off whole genes, not a mixture of our dad and mom's genes. All right, so next is uh, evolutionary theory, and evolutionary theory states that species change over time um, and that living species have arisen from earlier life forms. We're going to spend a lot of time with evolution later on this semester. All right. So let's take a look at the uh, characteristics of life. So first off, let's take a look at the properties of life. And so this is showing all the properties of life all together. All right, so the first property of life is that life is organized. So all life exhibits a complex organization. You can see that with the sunflower, you can see that with a single-celled organism, you can see that with us. Next, uh, life is self-regulating. All right, so life uh, organisms are going to undergo things that are going to allow themselves to stay alive. All right, uh, and so with this is this thing known as homeostasis. And homeostasis is the maintenance of internal conditions within certain boundaries, just like your body temperature, right? Our body temperature is 98.6 uh, uh, or 37 degrees Celsius. All right, and we maintain close to that. Now, we're not at that all the time, but we generally go up and down around uh, 98.6. All right, so if you look at this jackrabbit, how it maintains its body temperature, its homeostasis, is it lives in a warm environment. And what it does is it pushes blood out to its ears to help cool its body down. So, you know, just like we would sweat, uh, this is what something that it would do. All right. Next is that all life utilizes energy. Uh, organisms will take in energy uh, to perform life's activities. All right, so this is showing a hummingbird here. And hummingbirds, uh, uh, well, they take in quite a lot of energy per day, uh, almost their whole body weight uh, in food per day. So their metabolism is really high. And what metabolism is, this is all the chemical reactions that occur within a cell is metabolism. Uh, so we don't think about, you know, maybe metabolism being about chemical reactions, but those chemical reactions require energy. And so if those chemical reactions require energy, to, uh, then in order to metabolize, um, we have to take in a lot of energy. Okay. And so we need to, uh, you know, stay in homeostasis in order for all those chemical reactions to occur within our body. Now, we can classify organisms on how they obtain this energy. Uh, one are producers. Now, producers are also known as heterotrophs. So hetero means, uh, so I'm sorry, autotrophs. So auto means self and troph means feeding. 
All right, so producers or autotrophs, these are organisms that extract energy from the non-living environment. All right, so these will be like plants. They take in carbon dioxide and water, with sunlight, and they're gonna make organic molecules. Next are heterotrophs. Hetero means other or different. So other or different feeding, all right? So uh, these are organisms that obtain energy from other organisms. So those are heterotrophs. Now, we can break heterotrophs down into two other groups. One are consumers. So uh, a consumer is an organism that obtains energy by eating other organisms, ingesting them, all right, either in whole or in part. Uh, and so animals uh, are all consumers. Next are decomposers. Decomposers are organisms that absorb nutrients uh, from other organisms, all right? So instead of ingesting them, they release digestive enzymes outside their body, absorb the nutrients that way. Uh, and that's what fungus do, all right? Now, uh, next, all organisms respond to environmental stimulus. So something in the environment is gonna uh, have a stimulus, they're gonna respond to that. Now, most plants do not respond as quickly as this Venus flytrap on this damselfly, but plants will grow towards the sunlight, right? So if you keep them away from the window, they'll grow towards that sunlight. You know, animals, we can see that a little faster. You poke somebody, they respond pretty quickly. All right, next, all life reproduces. So, um, and life reproduces in one of two ways, either uh, sexually or asexually. So when you look at asexual reproduction, this is a creation of offspring by a single parent without the participation of gametes, egg and sperm cells. All right, so here the offspring are just like the parent. So here is showing two cells, uh, one cell dividing into two cells. Uh, this is showing a hydra. They're kind of similar to jellies, jellyfish. Uh, and you can see this process called budding. It's, uh, you know, growing this off here. Same genetic material in both of those. Okay. So here the offspring are just like the parent. So this is beneficial uh, in a not changing environment, constant environment. And also what's uh, beneficial about this is you don't have to find a mate. All right. Now, looking at sexual reproduction, which is what the giraffe have and what we do, all right, um, here, this is creation of offspring from the fusion of gametes. Here, the offspring are similar to the parent, uh, but not exactly like either parent, okay? So, and also the offspring are similar to, the, uh, to other offsprings, but not exactly the same, all right? So this is more beneficial in a changing environment. So if that changing uh, environment is changing all the time, and we go back to asexual reproduction, the environment changes, uh, it's, and if it's not good for you, well, it's not gonna be good for all your offspring. In sexual reproduction, we produce variation in the environment, uh, and hopefully some of those offspring will survive that. All right, uh, next is that uh, all organisms grow and develop. So we see this with this little crocodile here, all right? Uh, lastly here is that all life evolves. So evolution is the genetic change in a population over time. So that's a different definition from evolutionary theory. All right, so we're saying the genetics of a population change over time. So here the units for evolution uh, are populations, not individuals, all right? So all uh, species gen uh, composition changes uh, and this can lead to new species. Uh, so, evolution is a central theme of biology. We can explain anything through evolutionary processes. And all living organisms are shaped by it. What we're looking at here is uh, a little uh, pygmy um, uh, seahorse. Uh, these guys are about that big, all right? So uh, they're not very big. Uh, but over time, they have evolved for the coral that they live in because now they can blend in, are less likely to be seen by predators. All right, let's look at uh, levels of organization, and we're gonna start off with the smallest level of organization. Uh, and so um, we're gonna start here uh, with the atomic level. And an atom is the smallest unit of matter that retains the properties of an element. All right, so this is showing many atoms on this larger molecule. So um, the, ne the next step above that is a molecular level. So a molecule is a group of two or more atoms. So this is showing a chlorophyll molecule, all right? Now, when we talk about organisms, uh, the next level of organization uh, is the organelle level. 
Uh, so this is a chloroplast. So the chloroplast is an organelle found within plant cells in which photosynthesis takes place. All right. So an organelle is a structure within a cell that performs a specific function. Above this is the cellular level. So the cell uh, is a structural and fundamental unit of life. We're all made of cells, um, and so the smallest living organisms are also made of cells. We literally are made of trillions of cells. This is showing a plant cell, a lot of chloroplasts in it. The chloroplasts are what make the plants look green. That's where photosynthesis occurs. You get a bunch of cells together that do the same thing, now you have a tissue. This is a group of similar cells that have a common function. So this is showing like uh, the cross section through a leaf, it has an epidermis, a covering, and then some mesophyll here, and this is where photosynthesis is going to take place there. Uh, above this is an organ, uh, so this is showing uh, a single leaf here. Uh, so an organ is a structure composed of two or more tissue types that performs a specific function. So, you know, a single leaf is an organ, it's an organ to photosynthesize. That's why they're pretty broad in most cases to try to get as much sun as they can. An organ system is a group of organs that work together to accomplish a common purpose. So all the leaves would be part of the organ system there uh, to photosynthesize. Above this is an organism level, uh, and an organism is an individual living thing. So this is showing a tree here, all right? So above that is a population level. So there's a group of individuals of the same species living in the same area at the same time. Now that we have a couple of qualifiers on there, in the same area at the same time, because with biology, we're saying for them to be a population, uh, they have to be able to interbreed with each other, all right? So if they're not living in the same area, they can't reproduce. If they're not living in that same area at the same time, they can't reproduce. So obviously trees aren't moving, but we look at animals that do, uh, you know, uh, we have to have them in the same place at the same time. Next is a community, and a community uh, is all the organisms that live in, in a given, in a certain area. And so this is showing all the plants and you know a couple of little baby deer here, but this is all the fungus that live here, all the microorganisms that live here as well are all part of the community. Above that is an ecosystem, and an ecosystem is all the organisms in a given area along with a non-living environment. So that non-living environment, the soil, the weather, stuff like that. All right. A lot of times ecosystems are named after the dominant plant species. All right. Lastly is a biosphere. This is a part of the planet where life is possible. Essentially, this is all the ecosystems together. All right, so it's, oh, well, the entire planet. All right, let's look at the uh, classification of life. So uh, looking at taxonomy, this is a branch of biology concerned uh, with identifying and classifying organisms. And, 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 you know, pretty much as long as humans have been around, we have been naming organisms. And one of the main problems with that is, is if you go, you know, pretty much anywhere outside of the United States, you'll notice that they will speak a different language, all right, even different parts in the United States. And so they will call an organism by a different name that that language has determined, right? So back in the late 1700s, this guy by the name of Carolus Linnaeus came up with the classification system that we use today, all right? And he came up in that classification system with what is known as the binomial nomenclature. That's a two-part naming system, or what we commonly know as a scientific name. So that way, when a scientist in China or a scientist in Europe or North America or South America or anywhere, you know, is talking about an organism, they will use its scientific name in their publication so everybody knows what we're talking about is the same thing. All right, so just an example on this, you know, uh, reindeer in Europe, in Asia, are called caribou here. So, you know, those are two different common names for the same animal. All right, so uh, by coming up with that, you know, that helped eliminate that problem there. All right, so the classification system that Carolus Linnaeus uh, came up with is what we still used today. We've made some changes though, modifications, because you know, obviously we've learned stuff since Carolus Linnaeus. So let's look at the uh, classification for humans. So the broadest classification is this part, uh, thing called domain. 
So the domain uh, is, uh, we're in the domain eukarya, which means uh, our cells have a nucleus. Uh, we are in the kingdom animalia, so being animals, we're multicellular, uh, we move, um, and we're heter uh, heterotrophic being, by being consumers. Uh, we're in the phylum chordata. Ph phylum chordata is that we have a dorsal nerve cord or spinal cord. Um, so, and uh, we're, our brain is part of that dorsal nerve cord. So that's one characteristic for chordata. Next is class mammalia. So we're mammals. Uh, we have warm blood, we have hair, and we produce milk to feed our offspring. Uh, we're in the order of primates. Primates uh, are uh, distinguished by having binocular vision, eyes in the front of their head, and opposable thumbs. So the thumb moves in opposition to the other digits. Uh, we are the only member of the family Hominidae. So that's a family of humans, so I should say the only living member of that family anymore. Uh, we are in the genus Homo, uh, which is the genus of humans, and our species name is Homo sapiens. So Homo means human, and sapien uh, means wise, uh, so Carolus Linnaeus named us that. All right, let's take a look at the major uh, domains here. So first is domain bacteria. Uh, in domain bacteria, there are several kingdoms to this domain. They are all single-celled organisms. They lack a nucleus, so we call them prokaryotes. Prokaryotes are cells that lack a nucleus. Uh, these guys can be autotrophic or heterotrophic. Next is domain archaea. So archaea are, were, are superficially similar to bacteria, but there's some fundamental differences in their DNA and RNA and their cell wall structure, so we separate them into a different domain altogether. Uh, but they uh, also have several kingdoms to them. They're also all single-celled organisms. They're also prokaryotic cells, so their cells lack a nucleus. Uh, they can also be autotrophic or heterotrophic. Uh, they have a tendency to live in extreme conditions because bacteria typically outcompete them in other areas. Next is uh, domain eukarya. Eukary uh, the domain eukarya is uh, of um, eukaryotic cells, so cells that have a nucleus. And these guys can be single or multicellular. So, this is showing these major groups here. So, the first major group um, is the protists. Now, uh, there are many kingdoms uh, with the protists, uh, but the thing about them is that they are all single-celled organisms. Uh, we will find some that are plant-like in their appearance and structure, uh, some that are animal-like and that they move, uh, some that are fungal-like, um, they, you know, uh, you know, are uh, decomposers and so on. Uh, so, and then, you know, we can find some that kind of are mixes of the two. So they photosynthesize, but they also move, you know, so just a, a mixed bag here with the protists. Uh, but the key about them is that they are all single-celled organisms. So it's showing the amoeba right there in the middle. Next is kingdom fungi. Uh, kingdom fungi, these are the yeast, molds, and mushrooms. These guys are all multicellular. Uh, they're heterotrophs uh, by being decomposers. Uh, when you see a mushroom that looks like this, please don't eat it. The red color, the bright color is advertising its poisonous nature. Next is kingdom plantae. Uh, so the plants, uh, these guys are autotrophs uh, and they are, do this by photosynthesis, which we'll talk about later this semester. Uh, and they are also multicellular. All right. Lastly is kingdom animalia, the animals, they're multicellular. They're heterotrophic uh, and by being consumers, consuming other organisms.